Hello, welcome once again. About the topic of the printed circuit boards that are in your uh, automotive and cars and other accessories like your cell phones. Once I discussed before about the printed circuit boards. Now, if you remember one time I spoke about surface, surface mount technology, which is this, as you can see. You have resistors, you have smaller resistors, you have chips, you have bigger resistors, capacitors, which is the brown one, transistors. Sometimes you also have through hole. This is called surface mount. These are transistors over here. So on one side, you have the components. The other side with this board, you'll have just the connections over here. Okay, you don't see any components on it. In the true sense, this is called double-sided. Okay, whenever you have the connections on the other side, it's called double-sided. But what I referred to when I said double-sided to me was when I meant if you have, let's say, computer modules or air conditioning modules in your car or anything like that. Double-sided to me means you have components on both sides. Okay, that's what I mean when I say double-sided. So you have components on one side. These are through holes over here. See the, see the little holes that they go into, the pads? And surface mount. So it's like a hybrid. Okay, and on the other side, you also have components. So look at these components, okay? Obviously, more resistors over here. R is a resistor, more functioning uh, diodes over here. So you have components on both sides. Why do we do this? Okay. Obviously, we're trying to compress the space as much as we can. We want to make the board as small as, as possible for consumer electronics and other electronics. Your cell phone has become smaller over time because we can advance technology like this. We can make components on both sides in between them there's multi layers which i discussed one time these are layers inside there could be a ground plane inside in between which you cannot see there could be a five po five volt reference 3.3 volt reference 1.8 volts whatever there are multi layers in between but the topic here is in your modules, your PCMs, your body control modules, your transmission control modules, we want to make everything smaller. By doing that, we have to make every possible space that we can. Okay? So, like I said before, your cell phone has become smaller. Your flat TV has become thinner and thinner and thinner. Right? What, a, what allows us to do that? More more components on the front on the top and the bottom also obviously chips as you can see the chips are getting smaller and smaller and smaller these are chips they get smaller and smaller obviously there's pros and there's cons obviously the, the advantage is you can have a small cell phone you can have a thinner tv you can hang it on the wall okay that's all we, we don't want bulky and heavy components like 30 years ago in tvs they had transformers for those of you who are familiar we don't want those heavy things we want light things we want a small phone that we can carry that is lightweight okay so with the push on the demand of the consumer we also have to try to come up with a solution of all these boards in automotive and other places that are used to try to make it as small as possible okay now i just said the components are getting smaller. Now, what that is the challenge. When you talk about automotive, you're talking about not just heat-related problems. You're talking about, like I said before so many times, vibration. Okay? Like, you remember one time I spoke to you and I said, these are the pins. Okay? These are the pins right here. There are pads over here, and I'll show you a better example. Any one of these, this is the one that I, this is the one that I, a probe that I use on a meter on a fluke meter to measure pins because this is the only one as you can see the point is very small so this is the one that i use to measure from uh, multimeters with this type of point i don't i won't short out two pins together so with this as you can see if one of these pins come up it, it 
it won't be making contact or you can have a cold solder joint so obviously problems arise the good part is we're making everything smaller we've been making everything smaller. the bad part is components are getting smaller and harder to deal with now this is consumer electronics we're dealing with that i'm referring to automotive electronics anything that you buy a tv anything like that but let, let's my background is also military electronics in the olden days or any days they wanted to have government contracts so military contract was a great source of revenue for a company a great amount of money in the military there are standards let's say for airplanes avionics let's say for ships for battleships believe it or not every electronics has standards it can't be soldered the same way that it's soldered for consumer electronics for your car for your toyota it has specific amount of solder you cannot overflow the solder you cannot make it more than it needs okay or for surface mount for through hole all of these are standards that are uh, companies are required to observe when they assemble and they make the products for military why is that so important well let's talk about a plane a plane the hardest part for a plane is when it lands why when the wheels hit that ground as such a force everything is vibrating from the wheels the vibration goes to the instrument panel those instrument panels have what they have electronics that amount of force can throw off the components what about a, a ship military ship well a military ship we had let's say four or five of these boards around there was a metal housing you just don't make a product for military electronics the way you do for consumer it has to pass specific tests you put that housing that we had that was engineered four or five boards with that housing for protection it has to pass a specific a specific test a vibration test so here comes this weight that weighs about 300 500 pounds hits the force with all these boards inside it has to withstand that force of let's say a torpedo hitting that ship a battleship we're talking about right military we're talking about it took us about four or five years until finally we passed that criteria of that, of that vibration test this is why i refer to you as vibration is one of the worst enemies for surface mount technology okay now it's not easy but this is what the military requires so that's my background and also consumer electronics and automotive as you can see so these are the problems now this is double-sided like i just explained to you the small components are the problems the chips are the components now on top of that that i once explained so i don't want to repeat the same thing over and over again on different videos here's another board you can see this is double-sided this doesn't have the components but here would be the, the if the components would be placed they would be placed on this side chips over here here are the pads and here are the pins that make contact on the pads. As you can see, there's not much room for error. The surgical, I call it surgical, skill to do this is, is absolutely amazing to do it by hand. Sometimes obviously produced by machine, but some components like through hole and other ones are done by hand, believe it or not, by assemblers. So you have to be very precise, as you can see so one side and then on the other side will be more chips see these pads there will be a chip on top of it here are the connections with these with these connections from here to here you see these you can say these are wires over here okay so as you can see you need good skill for this vibration in a car let's say you hit a bump a speed bump in the school zone let's say you hit a pothole at 80 miles an hour 90 miles an hour this brings problems to these boards okay now over here i was asked one time by someone if i, if I can recommend the kit because after all he wanted to learn how to do soldering especially surface mount and um through hull i recommended a kit for him to learn to get familiar with how to do surface mount soldering 
So as you can see, this would be for capacitor, C11. The positive goes here and here. And these would be for chips on one side. Diodes would be three points over here. All these things, all these things would be for soldering, okay? Now notice on this thing over here and here. There's something called an array. So BGAs have an array on them, like ball, uh, uh, ball, ball grid arrays, they're called. So you don't have necessarily pads making contact. An example of that, like I said before. Okay. This is a kit. Okay. Look how precise you have to be look how small the components are these soldering balls if you want to call them that make the contact with these with these here's a contact here's another contact here's another contact so all these contacts have to make contact with this here's the problem whether it's consumer electronics let's say in automotive not to say that it's already in automotive or, or Probably in the future, they will have this because this is over 15 years old, this technology. And this is just from a kit. This is not the real thing. But this has to be done by machine, not by hand. So let's say I put this over here. Okay. Okay. A precise, try to get it as good as I can. Okay. Now, you hit a bump. This isn't this is in your automobile. You hit a bump, a speed bump. I'll say in a school zone you're supposed to go 20 miles an hour. You weren't paying attention. You went 35. You went 40 miles an hour. Okay? Such things exist, unfortunately. Or let's say a plane. This is in a plane, right? You took off, but then you landed. Once you landed, boom. That electronics took a lot of force. What do you think happens to this? This will be shifted this little shift it could be less than five degrees ten degrees whatever this little shift just messed up where the balls will make it contact with the solder so now see it's crooked why because you just hit a bump vibration therefore it moved from its original position therefore these ball grids are not making proper contact with these they're off doesn't matter if one is off or two is off your voltage could be off your your b plus supply could be off you could be shorting two pins thus that is the problem with all of this technology these type that come out if it shifts this could be making contact with these two at the same time you never know okay so that's one part of it okay that's one part of it when you're dealing with automotive technology and the components I just showed you, you need small, precise components. This is a strip that I use to put in the components, okay? Anytime you need resistors or whatever to re be replaced or things like that, you're dealing with these things that have the components in them, okay? This is the strip that has whatever, 50, 60 resistors. Now, you have to replace a resistor, let's say whatever you have to replace the re look how small these components are and i'll try to close it up if i can you're going to say to yourself as you can see on this side let me turn it over hold on hold on Okay, here's the strip I was referring to, and I'm getting a close-up. It might not be focused, but I think you'll understand. Here are the components inside the strip I was referring to. Look at these small, how these small components are. This is what I'm dealing with. See all these small little resistors? Okay, I magnified it. I'm almost four times the magnification. For this, you could use a magnifying glass or use a microscope. I deal with microscopes because I like it. I can really zoom in and it's easier to do it. So these little little resistors can tilt, like I just said, from vibration. So this is another problem that we're dealing with. 
okay the smaller the components great the smaller the board the smaller the cell phone you can have but to the technician it's a nightmare to the technician of automotive it's a nightmare that's why you know what we don't do any more comp a component level what do we do just change the board just change the entire board it's not worth it the soldering stations that you need and to remove with heat costs more than the whole cost of the board believe me believe me so i just wanted to give you a little indication of what we're talking about look at the look at and these are small components i want to give you a comparison these are small i'm talking these are really small okay these are small components resistor over here as you can see as you can see over here resistors are these are resistors take a look at this this is even smaller than the smallest of this this is what you're dealing with so when these when you hit a vibration this is what's happening inside your car or when you drop your phone on the floor and it doesn't work anymore this is what you're dealing with so i just wanted to give you an over overview you're not going to see this on i guarantee you're not going to see this on any other channel no especially with automotive this is a skill that's developed over time i didn't learn this in school i learned it obviously with so many years of experience but mechanical or electronic problems especially the electronic problems there's too many sensors in cars there's too many modules in cars when you buy a new car a highlander or whatever you buy TP, uh, uh, um, tire pressure monitoring system goes off airbag system goes off there are so many of these of these lights that come on your dashboard that every single time you finish with one problem another light comes on abs comes on i i mean there's so many the toyota camry of today is not the toyota camry it was 25 years ago because there's so many electronic components with it and so many things going wrong with these uh, uh, sensors and modules like adjusters but this is the modules we're talking about this is what we're dealing with in the automo automotive world. So again, so the reason I brought this up was somebody asked me about double-sided. When I say double-sided, I'm talking about double-sided both components, okay? So that's what I'm referring to. So keep in mind, if you learned anything or you found this to be informative, please subscribe to the channel. I'd love to get 10,000 subscribers. Thank you for watching and see you soon.